All right, you've made it to the very cool third video in my series on the central limit theorem. But man, this video is going to be great because we're going to learn how to do a lot of this stuff on the calculator. And so far, you have been amazing at finding a z-score, looking it up on the table, and converting that to a percentile. Now, we're ready to show you how to do that on the calculator. So, let us get started with this problem here by looking at one of the problems on the previous page. One of the problems on the previous page asked, what's the probability that a student group would score between 85 and 92? Now that student group had uh, a sample size of 25. So this is not a z-score. This is the central limit formula. And this is going to be in a normal distribution and we're going to have a standard, uh, sorry, an average of 90, and the standard deviation for this group was 15. But since we had a sample size of 25, we have to divide that standard deviation by the size of that sample, si sample size square rooted. Okay, so what this means is that we will have to check out this cool function on the calculator called the normal. Oh, sorry, let me erase that. Normal spell it right, right? N-O-R-M-A-L, the normal CDF. Okay, the normal CDF. And this follows a format of a low number. So the lower bound is 85. You can see that I have that here at the top of this screen. So the lower bound is 85. The upper bound is 92. And then the standard deviation is 90. And then we have the 15, which is the standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size, 25. If we type this in, we will get the normal curve and this beautiful, beautiful conversion to see what is the probability between these two numbers. All right, so let's go check it out. I'm going to go back to that previous page at the top of page this page here and you can see that I did all that work look at all that z-scores I found in blue the z-score here converted that to a percentile then I did this z-score converted that into a percentile and then I subtracted the two to get this can the calculator do all of that pain and suffering for me yes it can if I hit the second button which turns into an arrow and I hit the VARS button which is the variable button you've been doing this a lot the last couple days haven't you and you click down to the normal CDF hit enter and you'll notice that I have this all loaded in here here's my lower value 85 my upper so type in 85 enter and then 92 enter for my upper bound so that would be my low number here and my upper number here you can see I write this important info for a reason every time then I have my mu of 90 and then for my standard deviation I'm gonna type in 15 divided by second x power to, to the x to the second power here which gives me my little square root check mark and then I'm gonna go it's a radical sign I know it's not a check mark 25 close it off and go to paste and then I hit enter, and there it is, 0.6997, which rounds to 70%, which is really good compared to what we did by hand. All right, it's time to put the calculator away for a moment and take a look at the second example we had on that page, problem number three. That was dealing with um, uh, uh, renting a soccer field. So the probability of being between 1.8 hours and my group of 50 people to 2.3. And this is a normal distribution here. My average was two hours and give or take a half hour, but we have the square root of 50 because we have, wow, we have 50 soccer teams here. And so let's follow the formula again. The normal CDF of our lower number, 1.8, our upper number, 2.3. Our average in this case is two, and then 0.5 divided by the square root of 50. Type all this in, and we'll get all that work done for us by the calculator. That's pretty great. So here we go, back to the calculator and the previous page. So there was our answer, 99.8, boop, there it is. Let's go um, second vars, click down to normal CDF. All right, so my lower number is going to be 1.8, 1.8, boop. 
And then I'm going to go 2.3, 2.3, boop. My standard deviation is, sorry, my average is 2, boop. And then let's go with my proper, I'm going to hit clear on this. My proper standard deviation is 0.5 divided by the square root of 50. All right. What I love about this is that you don't have to do any work. It's just typing the stuff in, knowing what you're doing. And since we've done it by hand now, I'd say probably over a dozen times, you can now let the calculator take some of that load off of you. And look at that 0.9976 and 99.8. Oh, feels so good. Thank you, Mr. Calculator. Um, we now are moving on to the rest of this worksheet with a quick example. Okay, and we're going to do this all in the calculator, but I will have some cool um, kind of techniques to show you here because I want to see that we have this something called um, the flurry blog that the average mean average of tablet users is 34 years. Okay, so 34 year old person is the average person who uses a tablet. I'm sure that is skewing younger now. And the standard deviation here is 15 years. And whoa, look at that sample size. So if we just take our numbers here, I just want to show you some kind of cool part A to part B analogy because here we have our average of 34 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, so again, mu and standard deviation. And so this means that this is going to be 19 and this is going to be 49. Okay, so that's for uh, the population at large. So it says, what is the mean and the standard deviation of the sample mean ages? Um, what this means is that we are now looking for X bar. We're not looking for a person. We're looking for X bar. Now, our mu of X bar is going to be the same thing as the average. So our average is 34. Notice that our averages have not changed. So the average is 34. But the standard deviation of my X bar is now going to have to include the standard deviation of the sample size N. So our standard deviation is not going to be 15. It's going to be 15 divided by the square root of 100. And that's 15 divided by 10, because the square root of 100 is 10. And then 15 divided by 10 is 1.5. So that's my standard deviation. My standard deviation for a sample size group of 100, my average of it will be 34. And my standard deviation will be 1.5. x belonging to n of 34 comma 1.5. The picture I did up above was 34 comma 15. But this is going to be for my group, my x bar, that's going to be of n equals 100, where this is for x belonging to n of 34 comma 15. So there's this distinction, right? This picture is for x belonging to n, and this is for x bar belonging to n, because this x bar has a sample size of 100 people. That should be an n there. So what does the distribution look like? Well, it looks approximately normal. Okay, it looks approximately normal. And um, if we did a picture of this, you'll notice that the picture is now skinnier because this is 34 and now the standard deviation is only 1.5 so that these marks right here are 35.5 and 33.5. So what happens is that the bigger the sample size gets, the tighter this gets. So you're more sure of your answer because the bigger the sample size, you're going to get a more and more accurate average. So uh, that is pretty cool to see between this normal curve for one person versus this approximately normal curve for 100 people. Just keeps getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. So this is going to be great because it's going to ask, like, find the probability of the sample mean is more than 30 years. OK, so let's kind of like write our problem out, the probability of x bar is greater than 30, okay? And that takes me to n, um, which is 34, comma 1.5. All right, now I'm going to do my normal CDF. 
Now you might be thinking, but Mr. Anderson, I don't know, uh, I know my low number right now, which is 30, because it's going to be greater than 30 years, but what's my high number going to be? Well, my high number is going to be infinity, because more than 30 would be infinity, so I would get to somehow write that down, right? So 30, infinity, and my average is 34 and 1.5. So now you have to figure out how am I going to type in infinity on my calculator, right? So let's get to my, this is, this is how you do it. You're going to put in an insanely big number on the calculator. You're going to go 10 caret 99. If you go 10 caret 99, this puts a 10 with 99 zeros. And your calculator can't handle a number bigger than 99 zeros. So to get it close to infinity without getting an overflow error, um, we trick the calculator into thinking that we're going to infinity this way. So again, what are we doing here? Well, we were used to this formula by taking a low number and a high number to get a between, but now we can do problems that are either less than or greater than if we slap an infinity where it needs to go. So let us get that calculator back out here, hello, and then let's scoot it off to the left here and hit click on, and then go second vars, and go normal CDF, and we're gonna go 30, we're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna go 10 raised to the 99th power, that little power key, which gets you to infinity, because this then will give you more than 30 years, and the average is 34, and then this is gonna be 1.5, Five, and that's because we did the whole 15 divided by square root of 100. This is just faster to type in. And we go to paste, and we get an answer of 0.996 or 99.6% chance. So the answer here as we get the problem is going to be 0 0.996, 0 0.996 or 99.6% chance of being above 30. Mm -hmm. So if the average is 34 and you want to say, okay, what are the chances of it being greater than 30? Yeah, 99.6% chance that's a thing. Now, of course, that's back in 2012. I'm sure that's different now. All right, now you might be thinking, but Mr. Anderson, if, if this formula works for not only above and below and between could we have done it on the first page of this uh, handout? Well, sure we could have. Let's go back to this problem here. Let's go back to, let's see here. Let's go back to problem, back to problem two. No, let's go back to one part B. What percent chance is a group of 25 normally distributed students scoring below a 95? Oh, okay, so let's go and get that calculator back. Now, I wanna go below a 95, so let's go to second VARS. Now, let's, talk about my lower number. My lower number is going to be, in this case, negative infinity. So we're going to go negative 10 raised to the 99th power. Okay, so that's negative infinity. Now my upper number is going to be 95. So when you have less than, make sure that your lowest number is negative infinity and your upper number is 95, you know, your higher, your high bound there, and your average in this case, um, I think, let's take a look here, our average in this case was 90, so I'm going to type in 90, and my uh, problem here is 15 divided by the square, whoop, divided by, hold on, not E, 15, clear, shoot, 15 divided by the square root of 25, and then if I hit paste, let's check out that answer, I'm going to get an answer of 95.2%, which is, look at that, 95.3 is what I got here. So darn tootin', doing this by hand is pretty great, but also doing it on the calculator is even better. It's, it's just fun because then you can subtract that from one to get the above, or you can change your lower and upper limit to, to get the above. Now let's do, can we, can we even have done this like in the last section? Sure, we could have done this in the last section. Let's do the problem above it. What? Yeah, how about a student who scored a below a 95? I mean, look at the setup here. Look at this setup where I have the probability of x, not x bar, being less than 95. And n is 90 and 15 for its um, 
average and standard deviation. Well, the calculator can take care of this. Second vars, we'll go down into our normal PDF, and we're gonna go, if we're going less than 95, our upper limit is 95, and our lower limit is negative infinity, and my average is 90, my standard deviation is gonna be 15, and while I get 62.9%, let's go check it out. 62.9%, this rounded to 63.1, so the variance was a little bit higher on this problem. This is this is two tenths of a percent off where I was pretty much landing on it perfectly in the previous videos, but gosh darn it, man. This calculator is making everything amazing. So, wow. So now if I go down to this end problem here, I am now gonna show the last part of this video here is to do an old trick of finding a percentile. All right, now finding a percentile is pretty awesome because what we're going to use here is another calculator trick. When we've had to find a percentile, we used our good old friend, invert the norm. Instead of looking it up on the table and converting it backwards, so let's invert the norm. So the formula we use is invert norm, and we want our area here, 0.95, don't forget the decimal point, we are also going to have our average, and our average is going to be 34, and then our standard deviation, which in this case is the standard error of the mean because we have a sample size of 100. So our sample mean age is an X bar, so we need the standard deviation given in the problem 15 divided by the square root of 100. I could have just wrote 1.5, so I'll put this also in there. And if you type this in, you get your answer. So let's get our graphing calculator back here again. Okay, there it is. Then we go second vars. We're going to go invert the norm with this option here. And our area is 0.95. Our mu is 34. Our Standard deviation is 15 divided by the square root of, I just type in 1.5 because we did that problem before and paste and there it is. This is our score that represents the 95th percentile. So my answer is 36.5 and 36.5 is the, is the age, not the score, excuse me, is the age that represents the 95th percentile. Or you could say 95% are below this age. So that's the subtle distinction between a percentile and a percentage. All right, well, thank you for watch this, watching this video, and let's keep using that calculator to our advantage. In this next video, before you click it. I would like you to try the next page all by yourself and then see how well you did. Thank you for watching.